Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach a, a Roderick Belton, please. He's not here. May I take a message? Um, my name is uh, uh, Mark, ma'am. I'm calling from the I'm clinic sorry, from on. Dr. Robert Goodman. Turn Goodson's that office. music down. Hold on, I'm sorry. Say that again. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you now. I'm okay, sorry. I'm trying to reach Roderick. He's not here. Okay, I'm calling from uh, from the clinic from Dr. Robert office and uh -huh. I'm trying to get some information to him. When will he, do you know when he'll actually be in? No, actually, I don't. Um, is everything okay? Uh, well, you know, everything is fine. I mean, not, nothing that can't be handled. Uh, but um, yes. we, we're trying to actually get some information to him so that uh -huh. uh, he can actually come back in for the results. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't know when I can – he's supposed to be here now. So I'm not sure when I can tell you he's going to be back. Okay. Who, but... who am I – I'm sorry. I, I didn't ask you earlier, ma'am. Who am I actually speaking with? This is his girlfriend. Uh, and your name is? Jan. Jan? Okay. So, uh, Jan, you don't, you say you don't know, you have, you don't have an idea when he'll be back. No. You, you're starting to make me kind of get a little concerned, though. No, no, no. Wow. Okay. I tell you what, this is the number that he actually left us to give him a call on his results, and we're not getting an answer. I don't have another number on hand. Do you have any a specific time I can actually call back and, and maybe I'll get him? I, again, I'm a. You, you're making my my stomach is getting nervous right now. What what is what is the problem? Well, actually, you know, uh, what it is, ma'am, is, is Mr. Roger came in for uh, to take a few tests, and he took some tests, and we actually have the results in, and we'd actually really like for him to come well, back. I don't know anything about. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I don't know anything about any tests. He he hasn't told me anything about going to a clinic or anything like that. I see. So what what kind of tests are you talking about? Well, I mean, uh, ma'am, I'm not I'm really not at liberty to give you any kind of information unless you're actually on the paperwork. So, I, you know, it's not even something that I can discuss unless the patient has signed off that uh, you are the next of kin or the person that can we can well, actually give I'm, the information to. You, you do understand pretty, that, don't you? I, I do, and, I, and I'm pretty certain. I mean, the way we operate in this house, so I'm pretty certain that, that I'm on the, the paperwork. So would you please go um, to Let me pull up Roderick's stuff sure. and, on, on computer here, and I'll see what I... Just give me one second, please. Sure. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Now, let me scroll down for next to Ken. Okay, I got a Janice... That is me. I mean, everybody calls me Jan, but that's me, Janice... Wow. Okay, what, Ms. Tell me your name again. I'm sorry. What's your name again? Mark. This, Mark, this is, like I said, I'm the clerk here Mark. at Dr. Uh, Robert's office. And I guess I am at liberty to tell you what's going on. Please do. Mr. Uh, Roger came in and took uh, some STD test. STD? Yes. And, and I guess at this point I should just maybe both of you guys should come in. And wait so a minute. We can treat wait a minute. What and you, everybody, and wait everybody a minute, will wait be a fine. No, 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 no. No. I need you to finish what you were just saying. Well, no, that's what I'm saying, man. What has happened is he's been diagnosed with um, as well as. You got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Okay, just. I, I, miss, I, I'm, miss, I'm miss, not hearing this. Miss I am Janice, not. Hang on, hang on a second. That Janice, means, I think you, do you right understand now, what that means? Do you understand that he lives in my household? I, do you I, understand I, that that means that he has been dipping somewhere else? Because I have been not doing anything that would even come close to bringing something to him like that. So it's apparent that this man has been outside of my household and doing what he has no business doing and bringing it back in. Ma'am, ma so ma I'm, I'm not at liberty to make any accusations like that. I cannot say anything like that. All I can say is, you know, it'd be good for both no. of you guys to come in no, and no, get no, treated. No. Because Let me tell you, about let me, it is, let this is something treatable. It is curable. Um, I don't you know, care because about it, it being treatable or curable. What I care about is the fact that he apparently has been somewhere with some trick and brought something back home to my household. That's what I care about. And I, I do understand that, Miss Janice. I do. But you have to understand my position and what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to reach out and, and... Well, listen, you happen to call my household. You just happen to have to be on the end. You're on the other side of it. I'm sorry you're getting most of it. But I tell you what, what you need to do is you need to make him an appointment, and I will meet him there. Uh, he will be wait, 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 when he wait, sees wait, wait. my face. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry? You need to make him an appointment to come out to take a look at these results you're talking about, and guess who will show up at the door before he gets there? Me. That's I think it would be, do. I mean, since you're the Mexican, Mexican, wouldn't it be better for you just to, Listen, to tell him what's going on since I've explained no, it to you? No, this is the plan. You need to give him, you need to give him a call. I'm going to give you a cell phone number. You yes, have a pen. I, yes, I have a pen. Okay, I got it. Okay. You call him and set a 12 noon appointment. Trust me when I tell you, when he walks through that door and sees my face, he will know. Okay, okay, but...
Ms. Ms. Janet, I'm not trying to create chaos did you, in our did clinic. You set that's, the not, that's not the purpose that's of the all call. I want to talk about the call is to, is to let Mr. Roger know that we need him to come actually into the building. I could give two about a call. All I know is you make that appointment, I will get there before he gets there, and it's on. I'm telling you, that's how it's going to roll. I, Do you um, understand me? Hey, hey Ms. 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 Janet, I can't allow any chaos to be going on in the building. I cannot allow that. Let right me now, tell you you're, something. You're creating Let chaos. me tell you something. I don't. Care. I could care less about what you feel about it and what you can and can't I do. I'm not that, interested. Miss, 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 All miss, I'm miss. telling you is you call my house. I understand, but I call I'm not, looking I'm not, for Mr. Roger. Uh, uh, and you called his soon to be wife. I, you know what? Correction, correction. Soon to not be wife. Okay, okay. I got one more thing I do need to tell you though, Miss Jane. You, you know what? I can't deal with another thing. I swear to God, don't tell me okay, anything uh, else. But I do have a, a one piece of information that I do need to. Just make the appointment. That's all I care about. You make the appointment. I will make the appointment, but I need you to ask for somebody when you come to the clinic. I need you to ask for one person, and then they will take care of you. Who, who do I need to ask for? Okay, you need to ask for nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, because that's who I am. You just got pranked by your husband, Roger. You, you know what? <laughs> oh, my. Tommy. <laughs> Tommy, 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 I listen to you every morning. I said, no. Oh, my goodness. I am so embarrassed. And wait till I see Ryan. Tommy. Are you all right? Oh, my gosh. I am extreme. I am over. I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I can't believe you did that to me. Hey, I got, I got one more thing I got to ask you. Okay. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? The one I wake up to every morning, the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> come on. Come on. Whoa, King You got to give Tommy. it to me, man. Tommy. No, come on. <laughs> she, <laughs> she was so messed up. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> That's why I got a problem. Hello? Who, yes. who am I speaking with? This is Noble. Are you, uh, do you work with Carl Thomas? Yes, sir. Okay, that's who I'm looking for. I'm I'm Silk from Big Time Promotions. I need to speak to Carl if it's in any way possible. Yeah, hold on one second. What's up? Is this Carl? Yeah, yeah, who's this? Yeah, Listen, man, my name is Silk. I'm from Big Time Promotions. And wait, I'm wait, not... wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What's your name again? My name is Silk. Oh, Silk, okay. Big Time Promotions out of Mississippi. Uh -huh. Now, I've been dealing, I don't know, I, I, I'm trying to get this right. I've been right. dealing with your manager who supposedly is Big Mac. Am I right? Yeah. Now, I didn't sent deposits down of $100,000 worth so that you can do Jackson and Biloxi for me. Jackson was supposed to be last week. I've been calling all week long. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, you, you said you sent a deposit. You sent $100,000. I sent $100,000 to Big Mac, your manager. Who? Nah, man, nah. Well, listen, nah. brother. Who nah. all? Li nah, listen to I, me. If you if you would have sent a hundred thousand dollars, if you'd have sent a hundred thousand dollars, nah, nah, I, I, I don't think so. I uh, sent a hundred thousand dollars to Big Mac, nah. with, and he also, in return, brother, sent me a contract signed with him and your name on it. No, nah, I ain't signed. No, 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 I ain't signed no contract. Well, some I ain't see no. I ain't, I ain't see no contract. I ain't, I ain't see no hundred thousand dollars either. You, Nah. I understand what you're saying, but I'm letting you know what has already happened to me. Now, I'm not well, trying you to. Got, well, I, well, you got a contract signed with with my signature. My signature on it, though. How I know your signature? All I know is it said Carl Thomas. It had your name and your and manager's name on it. I'm trying to tell you that I didn't sign no contract. Let me say this. All, 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 right. all Silk trying to say, though. What yeah. Silk was trying to say is this yeah. right here, is that Silk is going to get his money back. That's for one thing. Now, what I don't oh. want to do is, is, is uh, we can handle this like men or we can handle this like gangsters. It don't make me no difference. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, partner. Hold on. Now you do gangster. Now you do. Uh, now, who, are you threatening me? All I know is I need your a in Mississippi tomorrow. Hold up, dark. Uh, hold up, dark. I, I, first of all, I don't know who the you think this shit is. I don't know what you think this is, but you ain't gonna call me up out the blue on no you talking about. You sent me a hundred thousand. I don't know what, what you talking about. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you talking about. But we can get into it, partner. If you want to get down like that, we can get down like that. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now. You know exactly where I'm coming from. 
I'm sick and tired of trying to get all these R&B singers trying to get played. You know what I mean? Just, I, hey, no, let me tell no, you something. Play this, like that, cuz. this is Silk from Mississippi. Yeah, I, play, look, I look, need look, your look. ass out. You think Go. it's R&B? You think it's R&B? Let me tell you something, man. Don't make me leave your ass in two pieces. Is that what you think? Don't make me leave you in two pieces. I want my money back. You and your manager all got right, my money. Sweet. All right, I see it right now. All right, I, I, okay, all right. Okay, um, Silk or, or whatever your name, I'm telling you, dog, I'm telling Silk you. Silk from Mississippi. You're stepping in mud, cuz. You're stepping in mud, cuz. I'm telling you right now, dog. You think it's, you, you think it's R&B, don't you? Let me say you. Let me tell you something, you Carl, Tom, Carl Thomas. Carl Thomas. Let me say tell it. you. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. All you pretty boys is the same. You're going to make me whoop your about my money. Okay. All right. All right. I see exactly. I see exactly where you're going, partner. Well, see me. See me in the street. You know exactly where I am. You know where I press that. Come on. I live in New Jersey. Everybody know it. Come on, man. You know exactly what it is, playboy. It don't on, take man. my. It don't take nothing for me to file no, my no, truck no, and roll no, to no, New no, Jersey. No, it don't take nothing no. for me to roll to New Jersey if that's what you're looking for. Now I want your ass in Mississippi Hello? tomorrow. Hello. Who is this? The Snowball. Ain't you the, you the little right-hand man? You the one I've been calling all damn week, and you ain't gave him the phone to let me speak to him. We was busy. What the hell you mean busy? Y'all got my money. I got $100,000 tied up in this. I don't know what you're talking about, B. Hold on. Let me. I don't know who you think you're talking to. I don't know who you think you calling up. The... How do you even get this number? Let me say this to you, Carl. How do you even get this number, can, Playboy? Can... I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, you got all the marks. You got all the marks. There's holes in your style, Playboy. There's holes in your style. Can I say I'm something? Right now. Let me... You got holes in your style. Listen to I'm me. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Only soft. Only soft anonymously called. You soft, Playboy. You soft. Let me say this soft. to you, man. Are you listening? You soft. Are you listening? I'm listening to you, man. I'm, li I'm, I'm listening to you, but you soft. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you, soft. Let me Brain. say this, Carl soft. Thomas. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your oh. boy Mike B. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Get these. <laughs> Carl man, Thomas. Man, y'all got me on the radio, man. Man, you thugging, baby. You thugging, boy. Nephew, come on. Oh. Hey, I'm man. supposed to be sweet to the ladies. I know, I know. You wasn't. Oh. Hey, man. You... Nah, man. I... <laughs> man. I mean, they got me, dog. Hey, dog, look here. You got a whole nother side, Carl Thomas. <laughs> Oh man! Hey man! Hey man! You, your boy Mike B put me up to it. And, and hey man! Hey, look here! Hey, well, all right, all right, Mike. I, hey, Mike, Mike, I owe you in the worst way. <laughs> boy, you got a gangster you side, know dog. You're wrong, right? <laughs> I know it, man. That's all right, man. That's I, all right. We're gonna I, we're gonna straighten it out in church. Now listen. Tell me this. What's the baddest radio show in the world, Carl Thomas? Oh, man, you know it's Steve Harvey morning show featuring <laughs> the nephew Tommy who really in the bag right now. You got me, man. Y'all wrong. <laughs> Go ahead and tell me how wrong I am. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're wrong. It. You're just wrong. Okay. You already Play know. A king of pranks. R&B can get pranked. <laughs> R&B can, can be I... pranked. Let's go, Kat. Well, why not? Uh, did, did... Well... Hello? Hello. Uh, is... is... I'm trying to reach a. Who's calling? This, this, my, they call me Pepper. I live. Uh, I, I think I actually live in an apartment behind you. I think my my our apartments are up against each other. Do you are you in um in unit? Who want to know? Um, actually, I'm wanting to know. I'm calling you. I got a little bit of a problem. I actually live in uh, in which is the apartment that that's uh, our apartments are, are back to back with each other, mm -hmm. and and. I don't mean no harm, man, but you, you are a though, right? Yes. Okay. And here's, here's what's going on. It took me a long time to try to figure this out. But when you come home in the evening and you turn your lights on, my my oven and stove come on. And I'm talking about every aisle on my stove is on and burning hot. How do you know that's because when I turn my lights on? I, I I just I mean I didn't figure it out. It just seemed like every time I mean I hear you when you close your door and and I, I every evening I'm like why is my oven and my stove coming on and I'm talking about my whole kitchen just hundred degrees in there behind the stove being on like that. Okay, um, did you call maintenance? From my understanding, I'm on the list and they're not gonna get to me for a, a couple of days now. So I'm not, I'm asking you, Miss. 
if you don't mind, to, to not have your lights on until they come get this fixed. Okay, so you asking me not to turn on my lights for three or four days and, you know, to sit in the dark. Well, I'm just saying, it's, go, it's only going to be for a couple of days. I know it's a little bit of an inconvenience, but, I mean, I can't be over here in the house, you know, damn, they're about to burn down. Are you listening to what you're saying? You're asking me to sit in the dark. You know, I got a baby. I can't sit in the dark. Okay. I mean, do y'all have any candles or something y'all can work with or something like that? Um, I have to give my baby food, milk. I mean, really, you want me to sit in the dark and you don't want me to turn anything on? You know, I got to feed my baby. I understand, and and, 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 I, and much respect to you and your child, I, I much respect. But what I'm trying to explain to you is, I mean, we have to look at the big hazard here. The bigger hazard is, is that I'm over here with fire on. Okay, you know? first of all, where are you getting this we from? How am I involved in your situation? I have because nothing you're the one that's going got the on in your house. And your life is patched in some kind of way to my oven and stove. Okay, but I still, I don't have anything to do with that. You know, you need to call management or I'll, maintenance I'll call, listen, or whatever, but I'll I don't call, have anything to I'll, do with that. And I'll, I, I want to know, how do you know when I get home and turn on my lights? I mean, like, are you looking in my window or something? Are you a peeping Tom? Do I need to call 911? You don't need to call nobody on me. Now, what we need to do is get somebody over here and fix this oven and the stove. That's what we got to get done. But until then, right now, you can't turn them lights on. Oh, I'm turning on my lights. Uh, I mean, okay. I know you ain't trying to regulate what I do in my house. I'm, listen, I'm going to tell you just like this here. I'm going to need you to keep them lights off until maintenance get over here in two days. Now, if if, if I see this stove come on and, and all these uh, eyes on this, on this uh, stove come on, then I'm going to come back over there, and we're going to have to rectify the problem. But I cannot have this coming oh, so on. You threat, and, so you threatening me now. I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I am not. I'm telling you not to turn the lights on. That's what I'm asking you to do. Well, I can't sit in the dark, and I'm going to turn on my light. So, you know, you're going to have to deal with it. No, I'm not going to deal with it. You're going to have to actually turn the lights off. Now, I understand. Do you have somewhere you can go stay? Oh, me? This? Do you have somewhere you can go stay? I'm not leaving my house. I don't have a problem. you the one with the problem. I, I'm not going to leave here and then you turn it on and then the And if you come off. over here and knock on my door, you think you see fire in your stove, you're going to see some fire. I can show you some fire. Okay, listen. I'm trying to work with you as calmly as I can. Okay? You're not trying to work with me calmly. Okay. The only thing well, you're doing right now is you're trying to tell me what to do and run my household. Okay, if you're not going to work with me, then this is what I'm going to do. Because I already found out where the breaker is. I just go and just turn all the power off. So you don't have your power on at all. Wait a minute. What the No, you can't turn my breaker. Up. Are you crazy? I got to do what I got to do. I can't start no fire around how here. How you get my phone number anyway? I mean, how you know my name, my number, all that? You know what? My about to come home, and he gonna put the foot up your. I don't care if he put your in the oven, and we set your on fire. What the you talking about? You gonna damn turn the breaker off? Hey, hold on, let me hold on. I'm trying to sit over here and prevent a fire for the whole complex, and you up in here trying to commit. Uh, 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 this is like arson for you to turn that on. I don't give a. F you don't. You already got a problem, so I'm just gonna add fuel to the fire. You call me, and again, I wanna know how you got my. F no. I, I, look, I'm not gonna sit here and go on this little small talk. I mean, with this you. Is the problem is, is, is that we got a problem with your switch. When you turn it on, my oven comes on, you and got and all the aisles on the stove. You come got on. a problem, and it's about to be a bigger problem when my man come over there and put a foot up your. I don't know who the you think you with, but it's about to be on. Who you think you're talking to? You call the wrong. I don't know how you got my number, but you called the wrong today. Okay, fine. I got one more thing else I need to say to you. Is you listen. You got to say, because I'm tired of listening to you. Are you listening? You ain't said, I want to hear today. You calling me with all this. Here it is. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your husband. Are you? Wait a minute. Hold up. <laughs> this is who? <laughs> this is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your husband got me to prank phone call you. Are you serious? Is this for real? <laughs> I don't believe this. <laughs> Man, I can't believe this. You all right? I know. I was ready to put a foot up in somebody. <laughs> I don't believe I just got pumped like this. <laughs> okay, I got to ask you one more thing. What is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. You got it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Come on, babe. Cozy, Cozy TV. Cozy. Hello? Yeah? I am trying to reach a...
Jones, please. My name is Attorney Gidry from the uh, Law Firm. Is she available? Yeah, this is she. How you doing, ma'am? I'm actually trying to get some business rectified. Um, dealing with your divorce that took place, I guess, over the last seven whole years. Am I correct? Correct. I got some file up with your paperwork here. Now, you guys had some property that you owned together, I believe, in Avondale. Am I correct? Correct. I'm looking at your paperwork here, Miss Jones. I'm still a Jones. Okay. I, now, we're getting down to the property, and that seems to be where the problem lies. This is in Avondale. You guys had some property, and you sold it as you both went and, and split your ways. Right. Um, Looking at the paperwork that I have here, it seems like, it was filled out incorrectly. I don't know how seven years has passed for this to come back and, and fall on my desk to be uh, to get rectified. But um, whatever the dividends were that you guys took and, and, and shared, that you're now looking as if you're owing Mr. Jones an additional $18,000. What is that? I, I, ma'am, I don't know. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I wanted to bring this information to you and see how we can get it rectified. Uh, I'm not looking for you to have that much money uh, available at uh, today, but I do know as a as an attorney for Mr. Jones, I must say that we're trying to get it taken care of as soon as possible. Oh, uh, wait a minute. How, wait, wait, let's back this up. How do I owe him eighteen thousand? I'm, I'm, I'm. For every, what reason? Well, the paperwork here, ma'am, seems to be. Yeah, what the paperwork say? It wasn't supposed to be fifty percent, fifty percent between you, with you all. It should have been seventy-five, twenty-five, and he being seventy-five percent of the property owed to him and twenty-five percent. Oh no, I don't know how. What? Uh, you know, Louisa is a community property, and how could he get seventy-five percent and I get twenty-five? Uh, from my understanding that he paid most of the bills when you guys were living together and... That don't have anything to do with that. No, he didn't pay most of the uh, bills. I worked and contributed too. Right, and I understand that. But my understand, from what I have here on the paperwork, and, and I understand that you had some contribution to it, but it just seems like you did not um, contribute as much as he did. And Yes, indeed. I never heard no like this. I do apologize, ma'am, but what I do need you to do is, is definitely not use that type of language while I'm on the phone, okay? Well, look, I don't really have to talk to you because I know I don't know. I don't owe no Jones, no $18,000, and he didn't overpay me because it was community property. I had two children for him. I left with none. He had everything, and there's no way. I'm going to pay him no $18,000. Ma'am, I hate to get a little abrupt with you, but you are going to pay this $18,000. Now, that's going to happen. Now, if I if I have to garnish your check and do it, then that's the way it will have to be done. But the money will be coming to Mr. Kirk Jones in the sum of $18,000. Call her back. Yeah. Look, don't you hang up on me again. Now, if I have to put a lien on your property or put a lien on your ass, which one do you want? Look, and you don't talk to me like that. I talk to you because any way I, I want to. you talked about because once I went to court, that all that was over with. You're going to pay $18,000. That's what you're going to do. Uh-huh. Now, I don't want to have to come to your house, ma'am, to pick up this money, but I will. I'm not working. I want to know how do I have to pay him 18000 See, you're not working. That's our problem from the start. That's why it wasn't 50-50. That's why it was 75-25, because you were not hey, holding no, up your... Babe, I work all through the year. I stayed that man 26 years, and I worked. Well, what is your butt doing now? Nothing. Well, there we go. That seems to be the root of our problem, isn't it? No, it ain't the rule of no problem because I want to know how did Kirk could get a 18%. And Louisiana is a community property. He had his lawyer there and I had my lawyer. He agreed to it and that was that. So I don't know how I owe him 18000 Ma'am, that's the way the problem was. Evidently, you didn't read the paperwork that you signed when you and Kirk separated seven years ago. Now, if you didn't read your paperwork correctly, this is why it comes back to bite you in your butt. Oh, no, it's not because I had a lawyer. And and he had his lawyer. We agree with everything. was back and forward. And we agree with everything. He signed a paper, and that was that. Well, maybe you didn't have a lawyer that was worth a damn who didn't read the bottom of the paperwork himself. And I had a lawyer and thought I had a good lawyer. That that And I understand that, ma'am, and that happens a lot of, a lot of times. I can't believe that. And I, I had two children struggle with him, and we got what we got by both of us work, and this song, he going to come back and tell and oh, no. I'm going to fight this. Well, when can we expect a payment starting to work on this 18000 I don't know.
Well, I mean, I'm going to have to get a date or something where I can start getting five hundred dollars from you per month or something like that. Yes, indeed, five hundred a month. I haven't worked. I was working. And up, when you want to sit, I, I don't think I should have to tell tell you all this because I need to get talk to me a lawyer because I'm not agreeing to anything because I don't think that no, it's not fair. I tell you, give me a deadline because I'm going to have to get me a lawyer. Hasn't it? I'm trying to keep my composure. As an attorney, ma'am. How do you have the right? And I, I don't have no say so over this. Are you? Are you? Have you remarried? No, I haven't. Okay. You, you realize if I don't get the money, uh huh, then I don't get paid. Right. Listen, I'm going to be down in your area uh, probably on Wednesday. Do you think you and I can get together and probably talk about this? Because I want to help you as much as I can. Yeah, because I don't think it's fair to me. Wednesday, where I'm not. I could be there. Well, you think that maybe uh, you and I can get together maybe and work something out? Yeah, because I know I'm not, I mean, I cannot afford to pay <laughs> Jones no $1,800. He done took the house from me for little or nothing. And I tell you what, I tell you what, I'll do this. I won't, I won't tell Mr. Jones anything, but only on one condition. That's me and you being able to work this thing out behind closed doors. What you mean work it out? I mean work it out. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? I don't know. Tell me. Well, maybe, you know, like I'm a, dumb. some relations or something. Really? Why would you want a relationship with me? Not relationship. You don't even know me. Not relationship, but just, you know, maybe kind of kick it. Kick it what way? I'm dumb. I don't know. I don't know nothing about life. I think you know a whole lot about life. No, I don't. But why is you messing with me? I just want to see if we can maybe get together. I'll throw all this paperwork out and I'll let no, it's not possible. But, I, but I'm if you not meet Mr. me, you meet me Wednesday, I'll make this thing go away. I don't believe this. I tell you what else you ain't gonna believe. What? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your sister Janice. <laughs> you no good. <laughs> on the air, huh? <laughs> I got Janice on the phone. I got her, I got her grandbaby on the phone. And you just got <laughs> by the whole family. Uh, Boy. Yeah, Janice, I'm gonna kick you. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me. Get a nephew, oh, son. You almost got like too much. <laughs> oh my god, oh, my god. Man, that took thing a thing sharp over. left <laughs> turn. <laughs> yeah. You didn't see it coming. I'm dumb. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> 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 All right, King of Hair. Oh, okay. Hair. Yeah, we're going to get out in the loop stuff. Yeah. Let's go, Cat. Nappy hair. Hello. Hello. I'm trying to get Francis. This is she. Hey, Francis. How you doing? My name is uh, Daryl. Daryl. Our kids, they go to uh, together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your daughter's uh, Kaylin, right? Yes. Okay. My son is uh, DJ, Daryl Jr. He. Hey, uh, I think I may have met you at the uh, beginning of the school year. You remember meeting me, Daryl? Daryl? Oh, I met a lot of people, but I'm sorry. I can't place you right now. Okay. All right. No problem. Hey, listen, um, I was getting your call. You know, there's only a, a handful of uh, black kids at the, the school, you know, being a private school and all. And uh, we, the the, uh, the black parents, we all got together and had a meeting a couple nights ago. Okay. You said all the black parents. Okay. I wasn't there. Why wasn't I called? Uh. Well, we actually had a meeting about your daughter, Kaylin. Oh, well, what about Kaylin? Is she is there a problem at school that she's creating or something I don't even know about? What's what's going on with? Well, actually, we're, we're you know we feel privileged to be you know you know like I said, there's only a handful of blacks, and we try to carry ourselves in a dignified way, our, our presence, our attitude, the way we handle ourselves. And, uh, you know, Kayla's doing very good in school, from what I understand, and very nice with all the rest of the kids. She's getting along. That's not the problem. What we're, what we're trying to get is um, the grooming of Kayla. You know, Kayla has these braids. And what we were trying to do is, is give, you know, we had a meeting hold about on, it. We hold wanted up, to- hold up, hold up, hold up. Did you just say her grooming, something's wrong with her grooming? Well, it's not necessarily her clothing. Of course, you know, the kids wear the uniforms. But the, the braids, you know, we, we want to represent ourselves with a lot of dignity, the way we carry ourselves. We want to be, um, you know, pretty much nice and clean, spit and polished. We would really prefer if her hair was straight and opposed to being braided up, you know? Wait a minute. I mean, that kind of gives off a, a ghetto type of look to it. And that's what we're trying to, to avoid. 
Are, are you crazy? Is something wrong with you? You don't have, First of all, how the hell you get my number? If you couldn't call me for the meeting, why are you calling me now? Well, like I said, ma'am, the meeting was to get the general consensus on where all the parents feel in the same way about your daughter and her braids. You know, we're just trying to keep everything classy at when it comes to the blacks that attend the school. There's only 10 of us, you know, 10 children attending. I'll tell you what you can attend. You can, What you can attend to is this phone hanging up in your face. You tell the parents, all of them for me, y'all can go straight and hit rock bottom out of hell talking about my child and her braids. Her braids are ethnic. They are nice. She is well groomed. And I don't know how in the hell you got my telephone number. But tell all the parents for me to kiss the crack of my you know what. Listen, well, first of all, I don't like the way that you're talking to me. Okay, I carry myself with class, with dignity. I'm spitting polish, ma'am. Uh, I wanted to call and talk to, to you like, like, like two adults. The subject of the issue and you're, you're, you're not acting, even calling me. You're, you're acting just as ghetto as her hairstyle. Let me say something real ghetto to your okay? You... And all the parents can hit rock bottom out of hell. Don't call me no more with no like this. This is ignorant. I'm far beyond this. My child is well groomed. She is going to go to that school. As a matter of fact, as much money as it costs to go to that school, y'all should have been meeting on how we can get together and pay the tuition. How about that? Uh, are you trying to sit here and tell me that you got a problem taking her braids down and wearing her hair straight so she can look a lot more classy than what she looks right now? It's a pathetic look that she's having right now. You know what? I don't, what's your hair look like? Take a picture of your self and send it to me. Text it to me. Since you get folks' phone numbers and give it to you, take a picture of your self and text it to me. I bet you you look like who would have thought it. My daughter's braids are going to stay up for the rest of the year. As a matter of fact, we ain't going to rebraid it. It's going to stay that way so it can be matted and represent. That's what we're going to do. Francis, listen, I don't, I don't want to argue. I just wanted to call and see if we could actually, you know, come to a medium on this. Do you think that there's a possibility that I mean, when I'm when I'm picking up DJ tomorrow after school. Would it would would it be all right if I picked up um, little Kaylin and brought her home and let my wife do her hair? Please, I wish the she would pick my daughter up and see what the hell I do. I'm gonna call my husband and tell him to come over your house and whoop your after he braids your hair. I wish you would pick up my daughter. I call the police on. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to call the police on me and my husband. Do it and see what happens. Ma'am, I'm just trying to get some class here. That's all we're wanting. We're not wanting to fight with you. It's just the blacks here at We think that we want a little bit more classy look of the way we are groomed. That's the only thing we're looking for. Only person who's going to be taking the class is When we get to whoop, you're going to be taking the class. How about that? Yeah, I can't stand up like you. Y'all get five dollars and one penny in your pocket and think you're better than everybody else. You forget where you came from. As a matter of fact, what's your, what's your name? Because I'm calling the principal on your a day. Give me your name and Mr. Who? What's your uh, name? Uh, 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 that's, 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 that's not, that's not really what my name is. Well, that's what the told me when you first called me. What is your real name? My name is, my name, my real name is Tommy. Thomas? No, no, my last name either. Well, what the hell is your name? Do you know? My name is Tommy, nephew Tommy, from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your husband Keith got me to prank phone and call you. I be. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Keith put your to this. <laughs> you got me ready to click your <laughs> the PTS <laughs> the L <laughs> school and everything. Somebody else, I tell you what, keep <laughs> eat out for the rest of the <laughs> week for putting this <laughs> <to> me. <laughs> he told me, he said, man, he said, it don't take but about two and a half minutes for my wife to go off. He said, it don't take but two and a half. He said, and oh I promise you. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> you. You all right? <laughs> oh, baby, calm down, baby. Let me ask you something. What, what, well, I got one more thing to ask you. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land. You know it's the Steve Harvey morning show. <laughs> Come on now. Boy, she Come on now. That violation. Hello? Hello, uh, I'm trying to reach a Mr. Noel. Do you know Noel? Hi, uh, Mr. Noel, my name is Mr. James. I'm with the Border Patrol in San Diego, California. Listen, uh, 
hate to give you a call here on, on Sunday afternoon like this, but it's been brought to our attention, sir, that you have been, let's say, part of a group that's helping people get across the border. Wait, 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 what? What? Well, wait, let's hang on. Hear me out now. Um, I'm just saying uh, it's been brought to our attention here at the uh, Border Patrol headquarters here in San Diego that, uh, and I know you live in Los Angeles, but it's been brought to our attention that you have been helping people get across the border from Tijuana into San Diego. Wait, wait, wait a minute, man. I haven't even, I haven't even been close to the border, man. What well, the f- are you accusing me of? I don't even go near the border. Okay, I, I, you so, must have a wrong Noel. Well, no, I think I have the right Noel, sir. But I, I'm just trying to get clarification here. Now, let me lay it out a little bit more um, clearly for you. From my understanding is that uh, I'm getting some. Uh, I've got an anonymous call that you uh, per se, Mr. Noel, is the one that has been helping people get across, and you've helped over 80 plus people get from Tijuana into San Diego, uh, into the United States. Man, how, let me tell you, how the f*** can I help people get into the United States if I just told you they haven't even been close to the border? What the f*** are you talking about? What's wrong with you? So, I mean, come on, you probably have the wrong Noel, man. I don't, sir, I don't have the wrong Noel. How can I call Mr. Noel so You live in Los Angeles, and it's been brought to my attention. They've given me the correct number on you, sir. I do have an address on you. I want to try and see if we can get this clarified over the phone. But I will send a squad car out there and talk with you. And if things don't go well, I will have you brought in. No, but- let me tell you, man. No, no, no. Oh, cut this. Shit, man. Let me tell you right now. I haven't even been near the border. I don't know what the shit you're talking about. But let me tell you, if you are near the border, or if I were to be near the border there too, and I would see my people trying to cross over, if I were you, I would help them over, because they're the only ones that actually work over here on this side of the river. Wait, wait. So get that into your head, man. They are the only ones that what? That work. You guys don't want to do anything. People in the United States are lazy, man. They don't want to do their yards. They don't want to get the restrooms. They don't want to serve in the restaurants. Let me tell you, this is going down the tubes because we are the ones that make this country roll. And I'm not saying that I'm crossing people over here. I'm not saying that, so get that to your f***ing head. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that you should appreciate what we do over here, and you're accusing me here. Uh, sure, I'm Noel, and I'm a hardworking person over here, but don't accuse me. I mean, like that. Okay, sir, sir, uh, uh, I'm not accusing you. It's been brought to my attention, sir, that you, Mr. Noel, are the one that's helping people get across the border. Now, you, did you just tell me that if you were at the border, you would help them? Did you say that? I said I would, but I didn't say I was doing it. There's a big difference. And I'm pretty sure you understand that, because what the f*** is this? I'm over here minding my own business, and you're telling me all this b- that people are telling you that I'm crossing like Mexicans illegally over here to this country? Let me tell you one thing, man. If you do not appreciate my people over here, don't start accusing me of bringing them over here illegally. Got that? I, I understand wholeheartedly what you're saying, but listen to me. I'm going to go ahead and send a squad car over there to your house and pick you up and bring hey, look- you... Look, look, no, 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 you listen to me. Look. If you send a squad car over here and they cross my yard, like you say, I'm crossing people over from the border, you're going to get your f***ing kick. I'm going to guarantee you that right now. You're okay? going you're gonna to do what? You're going to get your f***ing kick. Mira, you don't understand my people. Esos gringos chingados que they no quieren hacer ni un f***ing jale. Y nosotros hacemos todo ese f***ing trabajo. I what? hope you understand what? Spanish, because if you work for the Border Patrol, I do you not understand Spanish. I don't understand the Spanish. Don't you do that no more. You're going to have to break this down to me in English. No, let me tell you. If you're a Border Patrol, you should understand Spanish, understand my people, because look, man, mira, I'm going to tell you one more time, ese. Si tú vienes a mis cantones, te vamos a partir toda la madre. I, te lo digo de ahorita, güey. Did you understand? Cuñado? What did I just tell you, Noel? I told you, do not speak to me no more in that language. Now, listen to me. I said I'm going to send a squad car coming over there, and they're going to come up in there and, and drag you out your house and put you in the car and bring you downtown until we get it rectified. Well, let me tell you, you I know you've been No, help- no, 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 no. You listen to me. This is the United States, and I have rights. Oh, you got rights now. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I got a right to say. Do you have a right to be helping people across the border? Hey, man, let me tell you. Those people have the right to better themselves, I say. They have the right, if they can get away with it, to come over here. I'm not saying that I'm helping them. But what I'm saying is they have the right to better themselves, and you don't have the right to ruin their dreams, I say.
People got the right to come over here and better themselves, but what are you doing to better yourself, Noel? What am I doing to say? You don't even know me, you see? You don't even know me. Hey, I got my own, my own long mower service. I do the hitches and everything is it because you know what? Because the f people here don't want to do it, I say. And that's why they get people like me and like my people that are coming from Mexico. And we do, we ain't afraid of any, any little bit of heat or getting dirty. I got Noel 24 7, I say. I got no problem with you having a lawn service. I got a problem with you trying to get people across the border when they not. See, because you know what? Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? You ain't no uh, uh, Cesar Chavez. No, I'm not no Cesar Chavez. I'm not leading any labor union or anything like that. I'm just the guy that's trying to get it done over here, and you're accusing me of saying that. I, I got one more thing I need to say to you, Mr. Noel. What is that? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy Victor. Fucking <laughs> Victor, I'm gonna kick his <laughs> stick because this ain't funny, is it? <laughs> oh sh man, who's this, this guy right now? This is Tommy. I'm, I'm Tommy. We're gonna kick <laughs> to it because this is <laughs> Victor. He's my partner. I know, I know he's your partner. He put me up to it. He said you gotta call. You Noel. see, when it, you see, we're there in the truck. And we listen to the show, the Steve Harvey show. And you know, when you guys do <laughs> like this, and he's laughing his <laughs> up. And man, I never thought that he was like, well, I'm going to f up my partner over here, you know? <laughs> oh, oh, man. All right, man. Hey, let me ask you something, man. What is the baddest radio show in the land? God, the Steve Harvey show, I think. <laughs> Gene, I got you, girl. Let's go. Hello? It's me, the Gene. Yeah, what's up? Who this? My name is Vernon, brother. What's playing? What's going on? I need to holler at you for a minute, my man. About what? I want to holler at you about your wife. So you got a minute? Yeah, I'm listening. Uh, I don't even know how to break this to you, dog. I just want to be straight up with you, man. Me and your wife been kind of seeing each other. And uh, really, she want to let you go, but she ain't, you know, she really ain't got it, got it up in her to say she want to let you go. So, uh -huh. you know. I'm coming to you like a man and letting you know, you know, that uh, she really wanted to shut it down with you. We've been seeing each other for a minute now. Uh -huh. So I don't know how we can, you know, I'm just coming at you like a man, brother, trying to let you know she don't even really want you no more. You know, I we done talked about it, talked about it, and uh, I'm just trying to get it all I know. I'm tired. I I'm tired of hiding with it, really. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, it's a lot smoother than I expected, player. I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, long, long as you, long as you cool. I, I thought, you know, I just want to be a man calling, holler at you, and let you know. Have you seen her today? And where you from? From Jersey. I'm up around Newark. I mean, you said it's a lot smoother than you thought it was gonna be. Well, you know, anytime some another man finna call another man by his wife, I mean, yeah, you don't expect it to be nothing, you know, pretty simple. That's for sure. I, mean, yeah. I didn't contemplate it a long time by calling you, so I, you know today I just said to hell with it. I'm how you get my number? No, I've been had your number. I had your number a long time. All right, now you say you looking. Uh, it's a lot smoother than you thought it was gonna be. It ain't that smooth, but you know. You don't like, want you know. Like the, the the thing is, you got one up on me because you know my information. Now I gotta come find you. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Hold up now. Yeah. You feel like oh, no, nah, I'm gonna need to hold up. You uh, tell me what you gonna say. Okay, you feel like you need to be looking for me or something? Yeah. Brother, look look at this. Let's check this out. This is a decision that the wife has made. You understand what I'm saying? See you have no reason to be mad at me about anything. You have no reason to be coming looking for me or any information on me, because see when that happens, then it's gonna really get stanky up in here. And I'm trying not to let that happen. That's why I'm calling you like a man, brother. Trust me, man, it ain't nothing that I'm never worried about. Okay. Well, I'm just letting you know, man. I'm letting you know up front. She, we, me and her contemplated a long time, yada, yada. So now, you know, here we are. So I said, you know what the hell with it? I'm calling today. Y'all should have did this on the phone together. I'd have respected both of y'all a lot more. Okay, well, you know, and, and then, you know, if, if that's what it's got to be, we'd be face-to-face -face together, whatever it's got to be, man. So well, that's what I prefer, you know. Okay. So, but, but let me ask you this here. Where is going in? Once we both stand flat-footed and tell you how it is, then what? I ain't, I ain't gonna never be flat footed. Okay, well, well, well flat footed or upside down, any way you want to look at it, bro. 
I'm trying not to get into this physical part, but it seemed like you're leaning that way with me. It could be whatever, you know. It don't make a difference. It, it, it never does, brother. It never does. When two bulls come together, one of them got to go down. Now, guess what? We ain't doing too much talking. You got my information. Guess what? Now, I'm going to run it for you. Well, there's no need for you to say it. There's no need for us to discuss anymore. Okay, cool. You know, mind, while, while we at it, man, let me go and drop it all on you then. Because it seems like we need to go and get it all out the way. You cool? Right. You know what I'm saying? I think you need, you know, matter of fact, if you want to just keep it all the way real, you might want to go take a blood test about Alana and make sure you the papa to that. All right. Feel me? Got it. So, uh, I'm going to have your wife give you a call, man, because we didn't contemplate it too long at this time. You do, yeah, you do that. You know my information. Like I said, you, you said enough. You hit enough bones there. So, you know what? I mean, somebody got to go. What you like mean? you. Wait, 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 wait. What was all this somebody got to go? What, huh? you, what you saying? Somebody got to go. Somebody got to go, like. Okay, you talking about either me or you? One of us got yeah. to go? See, see, because see, you're saying the wrong thing, because what you must understand is if I've given you as much information as I already have, that means I have enough information to know where you are, brother. You know yeah. nothing about me nor where I reside. So if you're going to talk about somebody got to go, then you're saying it to the wrong person because I'm already up on you, player. At, you got first, to, off, you do, at first off, you ain't really a north because you got a country accent. So second off, like you're dealing with a real street so however you want to handle it, you know my information. Guess what? I don't reside there no more. I ain't there no more. So guess what? Now you got to start from scratch like me. So i tell you what, man. On, Here go the math, man. You ready for that? You ready for this math? You ready, What's player? Here go What's the math? math. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You've been pranked by your wife. I'm a killer. <laughs> Yeah, black man, chill out, boy. You you, you kind of had me scared for a minute because you really wasn't flinching. You Whatever you eating over there, you never did stop eating on it. Oh, I ain't going to stop eating. <laughs> I'm going to keep eating. So um, I listen to y'all every morning. What's the baddest radio morning show in the land? The Steve Harvey Show. That was a real gangster. Hey, hey. Cozy, Cozy TV. Cozy.